Welcome back, Mac 1350. Going through chapter 15 in our FANUC manual. Going to go over some macro commands and how we create a macro command and use a macro command. And then we're going to do a lab. Uh, we're going to make a macro command, uh, you know, open and close uh, or execute one of your programs or open and close grippers or things like that. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to create a macro program and then we're going to assign a macro. So the cool thing about a macro, it's a program that's just assigned the subtype macro at creation. So there's nothing special to making a macro. It's just like what a normal program uh, that we're be doing that we've already created. We can use one of your existing programs uh, as a macro. We just got to go back into the detail and change a couple things at the subtype level, and then we can use it as a macro. Okay, so what is a macro? A macro is like a function that we can kind of call out. Uh, tied to a soft key or things like that. Okay, so we can have predefined macros. Uh, these are programs that perform, perform functions commonly associated with the application software. So, predefined for us is tool one, tool two, where we open grippers and close grippers. So, we're able to do that. Uh, so, you know, we can tie it to the soft keys and, and do those sort of things. So, we create them for repetitive tasks. That's really what the whole point of a macro is. Okay, so that's that's one thing, something that's gonna happen over and over and over. So, like for us, tool one, open and close, uh, you know, grippers, those sort of things. Yeah, if we press detail on the select menu, uh, where your program is, you're gonna be able to modify the program's header, uh, so it makes it a macro. Okay, so if you create a program from the select menu, when it goes to type, okay, under type, you're going to set it to macro instead. Okay, so when you set up the macro table, any program you place in the table will automatically be given the subtype of macro. Okay, so very cool. We can do that to almost any one of our programs here. All right, you can create your own macro using instructions using the macro table. All right, so how do we get there? We're going to hit uh, <clears throat> menu, go down to setup, we're going to go over. To the second one and click on macro and hit enter okay and we can set up different variations for different macros that we can use okay they are globally to all of your programs and when you put it into a program we act the macro as a call statement all right so we can also place any desired macro functions onto a menu uh, as well so very cool stuff on that one all right so macros can be assigned to start by these different methods. Okay, so these are the three methods of where we can actually uh, have the macro operate. So in when we're in manual mode, all right, the teach pendant has to be turned on and the key has to be turned to T1 mode. Okay, in automatic, where the teach pendant's off, we're in auto mode. All right, that's going to be tied to our digital and robot inputs. All right, and then we can have it activated during a program. So we might be in the middle of your program, right? You're moving it down to move apart and you need the grippers to open or close. And the grippers are a macro. So we can call out that macro in the middle of the program to open the grippers when we need to pick something up and close the grippers. So that's uh, you know a benefit to having a macro assigned to you know a tool uh, or the tool opening and closing or, or whatever we need it to do. Uh, so, cause it's commonly used and we want it to be global. We want to be able to open and close grippers, you know, in any program. So we can set the macro to run up uh, on the teach pendant key is pressed. Uh, this is the most common one for us, other than just, you know, doing it a call out in a program. But this is like uh, what our teach pendant looks like on some of the robots. It doesn't look like this on the big robot because uh, it has weld operations and things like that on it. But we can set it up to any one of these soft tools. So or soft keys, sorry. So tool one, tool two, the move, the setup, okay, the IO status. We can use all of these. And it tells you what we can assign them to on the right hand side. UK1 and SU1. UK2 and SU2. Alright? So user key uh, and those sort of things. So the difference between UK1 and SU1, we have user key one or we have shift user key, right? So we can set it up so it's either just hitting tool one or hitting tool two or having to hit shift tool one and shift tool two. So that's what the S is for, it's because you're incorporating shift into it, okay? Other impro important things, if you use a UK, 
you have to set the group map to all asterisks. Remember the default when we do this program is to set up the first asterisk to group one, that's to the robot. But for this particular scenario when we're setting up a macro, all of them need to be asterisks when we write this program. Okay, so we can set this up to you know, tool one, tool two, open and close grippers, but you need to make sure that it's all set up to asterisks there. Okay, so uh, we can use manual functions for macros as well. And uh, they appear in the order set by the, the MF number on your macro table. So if you take a look at the, the setup, the macro function number here that shows on the screen to the right. So that'll kind of show you where it shows up. Okay, it gives you kind of a description. And this is under menu. You can go to manual functions, go through manual functions, and go down to mac macros. All right, and then we can set up different outputs uh, for manual functions as well. All right, so here's what we're going to do. You're gonna, we're going to create a macro program. So on the lab, uh, everybody's going to make sure that we're going to tie, uh, we're going to create a program that goes and puts the robot into zero position. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to assign your circle program to SU1, the triangle to DI2. That's going to be slightly different. We're going to use digital inputs tied to the uh, Siemens PLCs. So I'm going to give you a little bit different I.O. on that one. And then there's going to be one that says check calibration, all right, that we're going to tie to another one. So um, that's the zero position. So that's kind of like the very first lab or lab three or four that you did where you put it in mechanical zero. That's what we're going to call the, the zero position or check calibration. So we're going to have a button on there on your teach pendant or a soft key, right, that we can press and it automatically goes to the zero position. So we'll have a zero position program for that. Okay, so uh, this will be one of the, our final ads. We still have maybe one or two more to go, but we're getting close to the end here. Uh, so we'll get through lab 22 using our macros. And like I said, it's gonna change on different robots what the macro is. So when you get to this part of the lab, um, you know, ask me and I'll tell you what I want you to program to. Uh, we'll still do the circle triangle, but uh, we have a few different teach pendants that have different soft keys on them. Uh, as well and what I want you to call it out to, okay? Uh, remember, you're going through the procedures on this as well. All right, well, that's the end of this lecture, guys. Uh, like I said, like usual, if you have any questions, shoot me an email or ask me in class. Uh, we'll work it on the lab. All right, we'll see you guys in class.